Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this review, I'm going to do a maternity farm review over magnesium sulfate. So let's get started. What is magnesium sulfate used for in maternity nursing? Well, there are a few uses. One use is that it helps prevent and treat seizures in patients who have preeclampsia and eclampsia, because these are both dangerous conditions for the baby and mother. And how it will work is that it will actually relax the central nervous system and the smooth muscles. So why do we not want a patient who's pregnant having seizures? Well, it can lead to a lot of problems. One thing is hypoxia. It actually reduces the amount of oxygen going to mom, hence which will go to baby. It can cause placental abruption where that placenta can come off the uterine wall. We lose our placenta, we're going to lose the lifeline for the baby. Also, it can cause injury. Whenever a patient falls during a seizure, they can have physical trauma, which could damage the patient and the baby, and it can lead to preterm labor. Another thing that magnesium sulfate can help treat is it can actually help prevent preterm labor by relaxing the uterus. So that will help hopefully prevent the likelihood of early contractions and a early delivery. So how do we administer magnesium sulfate? Well, it's administered via an IV infusion. So the healthcare provider will give you an order and it will give you certain parameters for how you will need to administer it. So typically a loading dose is given anywhere between four to six grams given over about 20 to 30 minutes. Some sources say 15 to 20 minutes, but always follow your hospital's protocol. And then followed by that, once that's finished up, a maintenance dose or hence maintenance infusion will be started. And that can be anywhere between one to two grams per hour. So magnesium sulfate is a very serious drug that we have to watch whenever we're administering. So when administering or adjusting doses, it is really recommended that two registered nurses trained in administering this medication verify each dose for accuracy. So again, always follow your hospital's protocols when you're giving this medication. So now let's talk about how magnesium sulfate works in the body, because if you can truly grasp this part of the lecture, everything else is just going to flow from it. And you're going to be able to understand those nursing interventions and side effects. It's all just going to click in there. So two key roles that magnesium sulfate is going to do to the body is it's going to depress the central nervous system and it's going to relax the smooth muscle, which is exactly what we want whenever we have a patient who is having a seizure or we're trying to prevent those seizures or they're having preterm labor. So a big thing I want you to remember, get just put it in your brain, is that magnesium works to affect the actions of calcium. It's really going to give a calcium a run for its money in a sense in the central nervous system and with smooth muscle. So first stop is depressing the central nervous system. Magnesium has this calming effect on the brain and the nervous system, which is particularly useful in seizures. And how it does this is the following ways. First thing is it causes the nerve cells to chill out. And what I mean by this is it makes them less likely to fire. So whenever a nerve cell fires, it releases neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters could either excite or relax the nervous system. It really all depends on the type of neurotransmitter that we're talking about, because we have excitatory neurotransmitters transmitters and we have inhibitory neurotransmitters. Excitatory, just as its name says, it's going to excite the nervous system and really jazz it up. We got a lot of that in seizure activity. Inhibitory, it's going to inhibit things, it's going to relax things and cause it to chill out. So these neurotransmitters are released at the synapsis of the cell under the influence of ions, with one of those ions being calcium. So calcium is very important for the process of the neurotransmitter being released at the synapsis. So whenever we start the patient on magnesium sulfate IV, it's going to give them just a little bit of extra magnesium, which is going to help limit how calcium can enter those nerve cells, particularly at that junction between the nerve cells. And this will have an effect where it's going to limit how much calcium enters that presynaptic neuron by inhibiting those calcium channels that it would utilize. So whenever we can do that, what happens is that we can significantly decrease the amount of certain neurotransmitters that will be released. So let's look at this illustration for a moment. We have our on our top our presynaptic neuron and you see in that orange that is our calcium channel. So this is the entry point for calcium to go into the nerve cell. Well magnesium when we got that on board it's going to limit this process of calcium being able to go through here. 
So whenever we're doing this, we are limiting some neurotransmitters, particularly an excitatory neurotransmitter known as glutamate. We are limiting its action. And they have actually found out that high levels of glutamate actually increases the risk of seizure activities. So that is a good thing that we are limiting this excitatory neurotransmitter. Now on the flip side, magnesium can actually help enhance the function of an inhibitory neurotransmitter known as GABA. That stands for gamma aminobutyric acid. And this is good because this neurotransmitter actually helps relax brain activity, which is what we need whenever we're trying to prevent or treat seizures. And then the next thing that magnesium sulfate does is that it relaxes the smooth muscle. And how it does this is that magnesium sulfate works to block calcium's actions on smooth muscle. So instead of getting contraction, we get relaxation. And this is really crucial in situations like seizures or preterm labor. So how does it do this? Well, one way is that it is a calcium antagonist. So it is going to prevent calcium from entering in those muscle cells because remember, Normally, calcium will enter into the muscle cells. It's going to bond with some proteins and we're going to get contraction. Well, magnesium is going to undo that it, because it's antagonizing it. It's not going to allow that to happen. So in cases of preterm labor or seizures, whenever we prevent this influx of calcium into these cells, it's actually going to cause that muscle to relax and help stop unwanted contractions. Now, another thing that magnesium sulfate is going to do is it's actually going to help lower that blood pressure, which is definitely what we need whenever a patient has preeclampsia because one of those signs and symptoms is hypertension. So how magnesium sulfate will do that is that it will go in there and relax that smooth muscle in those blood vessels. So if we're relaxing the smooth muscle in the blood vessels, they're not constricting, which increases blood pressure instead they're dilating and when we dilate blood vessels we help lower or hence reduce the blood pressure so all of these actions of magnesium sulfate are very beneficial in a patient who is experiencing preeclampsia, eclampsia, or preterm labor. However, care has to be taken whenever a patient is taking this medication because toxicity can occur. Therefore, as a nurse, we have to monitor for signs of toxicity during the administration of magnesium. Now let's talk about the side effects that we can see whenever a patient is receiving this medication. So we're going to look at the side effects that we expect to see when this infusion is starting versus the side effects whenever the patient may start to become toxic on this medication. So whenever we're starting a magnesium infusion, there, the patient has to be aware of certain side effects that are going to happen because they may get freaked out about this. So first off, they're going to start to feel flushing, feeling warm, they may sweat. And this is caused by that vasodilation. Remember the effects that magnesium had on the blood vessels. It caused them to relax. So we're getting that dilation. Now this should subside as the body adjusts. They can also start to experience nausea because magnesium is going to start to relax smooth muscle also in the GI system, which could cause nausea. And then they could start to feel more drowsy or weak. And this is just due to that depression that we're putting on the central nervous system. Again, these side effects that I just went over should start to ease up or fade as the body adjusts. Now some signs and symptoms of magnesium toxicity that you want to monitor for are the following. So this tells us that magnesium level is maybe getting up a little too high. First thing is that you're having worsening side effects of those side effects we just went over. So they're getting worse flushing, sweating, nausea, drowsiness. Also, you're starting to see some major central nervous system depression. You're starting to see slurred speech, complete confusion. They have decreased or absent, absent deep tendon reflexes. So when you're checking those deep tendon reflexes, because per protocol, you're gonna be checking those regularly. You're gonna to start to see, for instance, like with the patellar reflex, it has diminish from baseline dramatically or it's gone. And this can actually be an early sign, so always watch out for those. Bradypnea, this is where their breathing rate starts to get less than 12 breaths per minute. Watch this closely. Some sources suggest that you start monitoring really closely if it gets less than 16, so follow protocol. They start to experience hypotension, so that blood pressure starts to drop. Again, this is all going back to those actions of how MAG normally works. It's okay a little bit within a certain range, but if we give them too much, we can stop their breathing and lower their blood pressure way too much. 
It can also decrease urinary output. So you want to make sure you're measuring that anything less than 30 mils per hour and then ECG changes. So look at their ECG for any heart blocks, a widening QRS complex, bradycardia, because it can affect the electrical conduction system. And again, when these signs and symptoms start to present, that can mean magnesium toxicity and require immediate intervention. So now let's look at our nurse's role because it'll go more in depth about what to do whenever this presents. So to help us remember that important information, let's remember a mnemonic I created called MAGI. So M is monitor those deep tendon reflexes. So you wanna establish a baseline before starting the infusion. Hence, look at that patellar reflex like I said earlier. And you're gonna continue assessing these reflexes at regular intervals throughout the infusion per protocol. So an early sign of toxicity is we have a change in our deep tendon reflexes. And this is as magnesium is starting to accumulate, hence elevate. So use a point scale for assessment. Zero is absent, one plus is diminished, two plus is normal, three plus is brisk, and four plus is hyperactive. Now it's important to note that, let's say the reflexes do become decreased from baseline significantly or absent. You wanna stop the infusion immediately and notify the healthcare provider. Also on the flip side, let's say that they suddenly become brisk or hyperactive. It could mean that the dose of magnesium is too low or something else is going on. Therefore, you wanna report those findings to the healthcare provider too. And then A, around the clock assessments are vital with early detection of toxicity. So you're gonna be doing these important assessments. You're gonna look at neurological status. You're gonna monitor for changes in mental status, any excessive drowsiness, confusion, slurred speech, provide a cool, dark, calm environment. Check that respiratory rate, monitor closely, particularly if it falls out of those parameters set by your institution, so less than 12 breaths per minute. Check that blood pressure, monitor for hypotension, oxygen saturation, ensure it stays within normal range greater than 95%. The ECG heart rate, whenever you're looking at their rhythm strips, monitor that PR interval, a normal PR interval is between 0.12 to 0.20. And if you don't remember what a PR interval is, remember it's a point at the beginning of the P wave to right before the QRS complex. And we're looking at those little squares. And you wanna look at the QRS complex duration. A normal is less than 0.12 seconds. And you wanna notify the healthcare provider immediately for any changes because heart blocks can occur. So for the PR interval, for instance, it would be greater than 0.20 two zero seconds, it could mean a heart block. And then look at urinary output. Magnesium sulfate is primarily secreted through the kidneys. And if we have impaired renal function, this can lead to magnesium building up in the blood, causing toxicity. So it's crucial to monitor renal function, which includes monitoring the urinary output closely. It should be, what was that special number again? Greater than 30 milliliters per hour. So if it drops below 30 mils per hour, you wanna notify that healthcare provider immediately. Many times protocols are gonna call for Foley catheter insertion so we can see exactly how much is being put out. Plus, routine labs will be ordered to be checking the BUN and creatinine, making sure renal function is good. And a fluid restriction can be ordered, so you wanna implement the fluid restriction per the healthcare provider's orders. Why would this be needed? Well, think again to how magnesium works. Magnesium sulfate causes the body to retain fluid by dilating blood vessels and lowering blood pressure. This could actually lead to pulmonary edema due to fluid accumulating in the lungs. So a fluid restriction is gonna help reduce the risk of fluid overload. It can also be important for controlling the blood pressure if a patient has that hypertension. Next is G, goal for magnesium to be therapeutic. This is anywhere between four to seven milligrams per deciliter. So if this level exceeds seven milligrams per deciliter or more, toxicity symptoms may occur, those ones that we talked about earlier. So you always wanna follow protocols for what you need to do next whenever this occurs. Then our next G is give calcium gluconate as an antidote if toxic. So if we have toxicity, that is our antidote that will undo those signs and symptoms. I is for inappropriate for patients with, we're talking about it's inappropriate to give magnesium sulfate to patients with renal failure because there is impaired excretion, which increases risk of toxicity. Myasthenia gravis or other neuromuscular diseases, this increases muscle weakness risk, which we can already cause with the mag, we can just make it worse. Dysrhythmias like 
heart blocks. This could lead to cardiac arrest and within two hours of delivery. So magnesium crosses the placenta and may cause respiratory depression in the baby after birth. So you don't want to give it within two hours of delivery. And then lastly, E for extravasation risk at IV sites. So magnesium sulfate can cause tissue damage if it extravasates, hence leaks, into that surrounding tissue. So signs of this happening is that at the IV site, you're going to see redness, swelling, pain, or burning. And we can actually prevent this. So some steps you can take is you use a really large vein, preferably in the antecubital fossa whenever you're infusing. Infuse it slowly and perform routine IV site checks to detect the problem early. So we can detect it early, we can prevent the amount of damage that happens. So you wanna educate the patient to report to you any pain, swelling, or burning at the site immediately. And if it does occur, you wanna stop the infusion and follow your institution's protocols. Many sources recommend applying a warm compress because they say it may help promote absorption of the medication out of the tissues to the site. Although there's a lot of debate on whether it should be warm or cold, which one's more effective. So just follow again your protocols. Okay, so that wraps up this review on magnesium sulfate. And if you'd like to test your knowledge on the material that we just covered, you can access a free quiz via the link in the description below.